it's an action for equality or diva for equality so we've come in from nandi today we've had our small vision of a vigil um a couple of weeks ago i think it is now um and we've been following really closely and trying to support um efforts to call for an immediate ceasefire but more than that to to kind of make ourselves clear about what our position is in terms of um human rights and gender and social and economic and ecological justice and how that connects with um what is happening in Gaza and in Palestine today so the first thing i want to kind of say is we have to be clear on what is happening so there are over 8000 deaths and those are just the ones that are in the official count list there are over 1000 people that we know are still under the rubble we know that in the case of Gaza that the number of um young people under 24 years old is about 60% of the population so that in itself tells you um the level of impact on communities there um but you know literally 8000 people dead and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands now um that are um displaced from their homes because they're living um in a place that is literally rubble now um that has just been bombarded and there's a reason not just for how quick we've seen the impact and why it's genocidal um but also that there are reasons why we're saying the damage um the amount of um horror for the people of Gaza is how it is today so thank you for coming in all around the world those who are also showing solidarity um in terms of ending the genocide um in Gaza and West Bank and the Palestinian territories um one of the things that we're trying to be very clear on is saying around the world people have been able to protest and we would have loved to have this saturday um a march and that's not possible now and there will be more who are commenting on this there it's already being spoken about online of course there will be pain and there will be anger about the fact that it's very hard for us right now coming out of all of those years of a militarized um government and then now seeing our rights again um impacted so i just want to keep it really um short and say there's no doubt that what we're seeing in Gaza right now is an attempt at genocide we're seeing a lot of um high level um technical officers from the UN and many other um <coughs> government um plenipotentiary leaders who are starting to resign from their positions um we just had a very high level um human rights officer who who um resigned and there's a reason when people have been a, an officer for 30 years and they're telling you that this is an outright genocide then we should be listening um and all of us should be listening including our political leaders there's no doubt that the genocide is being committed by the zionist leadership of israel it's enabled by a fading imperial power the USA and and we know it and we've those of us who've been following this over decades we have seen the way that this has been this has been enabled um what is happening today it didn't just start with um with uh, October 7th um and we call on all people of conscience to to stop you know all of the violence um as women peacemakers as feminists from around the world we've been very clear that we we insist you know on a in a world that is about socio-economic ecological and climate justice but that doesn't mean that we don't call out a deliberate attempt at wiping a certain set of people off the earth we have seen it in west papua we are seeing it in west papua we have seen it in um sorry in uh, sudan and there are many other instances haiti and many others that we can talk to through history so it's not as if it's the first time that we've been called to speak out about this and we're not doing a very good job here um in terms of our formal political leadership but people's movements around the world have been incredible they've come out in numbers that we've never seen before hundreds of thousands and even a million in one protest um so there there are ways that the people of the world are saying enough is enough um we call for an end to the funding of any zionist terrorist apartheid um government of israel we know that we have to call the political economy out and we have to say there are reasons why the money goes to this 
let's name the fact that there are people who are getting very rich from war, the military-industrial complex, and who owns that military-industrial complex. We just saw another vote that's very interesting in the UN lately, where we were trying to get rid of the weapons of war, the nuclear weapons of war. And it's the same nuclear powers that are the ones that are voting no, no. a very small number, about six to eight of them, the same ones who are supporting Israel right now. So there is a connection between the, both the political economy and also the military industrial complex. And we should be clear that in our simplistic analysis, when we're saying we just support Israel, there is a much deeper set of work that is about anti-colonialism and about us being able to live our lives freely across the world, including here in Fiji. So I just wanted to say um, we know that we can't look away now. We know that there are attempts that are happening in the, the United Nations, but it's very difficult. You have 193 countries who, are, who all have their varying political positions, and out of those 193, there are five of them that hold a veto vote within the UN Security Council. That's the way the UN was set up after the Second World War. And so you can have Russia put forward a resolution and the other side will say no. You can have the US put forward a resolution in the Security Council and the others veto it. And so we went to the UN um, General Assembly and said, when you are one vote, one country, what is it that you vote for? And we all know the results, that we had 120 countries who said very clearly, there must be a ceasefire now. Out of those, then we had 120, we had 45 that voted no. The same nuclear powers and military industrial complex, plus some of the small island states and others who show fealty to those major um, powers in the world. And we want to say no. And don't pretend it is about a religious conflict. It is about geopolitics and it is, is a, it is about wiping a particular set of people off the earth. And we know it and we say no to it. We resist it because we resist on, in the name of peace and, and liberation and justice for all of us in the world. So I think I'm just going to leave it at that. There's a lot more that can be said about this. So much of it is online, so much pain and trauma that we're, we're all going through vicariously, but it's nothing compared to what the people of Gaza and Palestine are going through right now. And now in Jenna, in the West Bank and others, they are also facing um, this issue. So I will leave it at that and say power to the people because it is the people who will decide whether or not we can stop um, this conflict. And it's not a war. There is an asymmetry and it started with the, with the Nakbar and with the catastrophe that has happened to the people of Palestine. So thank you.